Good morning, folks. A common question I get when I show longitudinal waves ripped across the world from large quakes is why aren't these felt when they appear to be enormous readings? Folks, even that moderate shake like the 5.7 we took in California sends these waves across the globe, but they're different from the shaking you feel. Try googling the difference between longitudinal and transverse seismic waves. Folks, our sun diving comet did indeed disintegrate before our eyes with the little trailer to the right of it you can see coming up just after the first, also died upon approach. NASA's science cast put out their analysis of potential hot Jupiter weather. Tony Phillips led creative design on this piece, and the actual article is linked with the videos on that page as well. Most of you know that while I assert this planet is experiencing climate extremes of all types at the moment, that definitely includes warming. However, this shows the 2000s first decade compared to the 1950s through the 80s. Wonder what would happen if they added the much warmer 90s or the last few years which weren't super hot, bet it wouldn't look so one-sided. Top quakes of the day included unusual shaking in Uzbekistan, normal Indonesia rumbling as well, and five pointers south of Easter Island as well as south of Australia and New Zealand. One buoy in event mode, this is about a six to seven foot swing only. Got two potential tropical storms building on the southern coastline of the Americas here, already dropping significant precipitation. While I shared Norway's flooding yesterday, and the rain has shared that effect with Sweden and Germany, this is taking place in San Antonio, Texas. Torrential downpours have turned deadly as a woman was swept away after getting within a hand's reach of rescuers. The rain may break locally for a bit, but the general trend is rain, rain, rain. We have a low pressure system just east of the Rockies and the moisture has a pathway straight north from the Gulf of Mexico. Watch zone in the central and north central states tonight. Couple nice active regions on the sun. Unfortunately, both lacking the magnetic complexity to match their size. Their magnetics are pretty evenly divided, looking like girls and boys at their first school dance. Perhaps the newcomers on the limb can show them how it's done next week, because right now, there is absolutely nothing in terms of flaring. It's not like we're eager to rush our star, however. Earth is dealing with quite the solar wind situation at the moment. Speed has ramped over 800 kilometers per second in association with the powerful outward magnetic force of these dark coronal holes that were facing us some days ago. Any measurable density at that speed is a major wind stream. It kicked our shield's butt the last 24 hours. Look at it compared to the last full week. Red line barely dips, indicating plasma penetrated all day. Inductions were tremendous from the baseline, but actually slightly weaker at higher frequency. Our system has been unstable to storm status for over a day now. Remember, sky watchers, major planetary conjunctions this weekend. The show is going to continue into next week with Mercury, Venus, and Jupiter in the sunset sky. At this point, the major quaking from this umbral opening should be over. Not to say we'll have no significant quakes until the next coronal hole shows itself, but hey, it is big trans-equatorial turning this way and after this high coronal view and pink overlay of 211 angstroms we'll get a bit closer to the surface and check out the big active regions and a few nasty looking plasma filaments eyes open no fear it's 6:45 a.m eastern time and that's the news be safe everyone